Hi, my name is Luis Pedro Almeida. I'm an oceanographer and a senior scientist at Colab Plus Atlantic in Portugal. And in this video, I will be talking about coastal erosion. Coastal areas are located at the transition between ocean and land. And in this region, it's possible to find a variety of environments, such as wetlands, rocky shores, sandy beaches, or gravel beaches. Due to the waves, tides, and sea level, these environments are constantly changing and naturally adapting to the new conditions. And that's why these environments are some of the most dynamic environments in the world of sediments on a given coastal sector. This is a long-term process that can lead to dramatic changes in the coastline, as you can see on this time-lapse of satellite image. Due to the increasing settlements on the coast, understanding these natural dynamics, such as coastal erosion, becomes a crucial task in order to inform decision makers so that they can prevent, mitigate or adapt against changes that can put at risk civilians or human infrastructure. First, to understand the sediment balance within this sector. The sediment balance is the result of the difference between the amount of sediments that are entering this uh, sector and the amount of sediments that are leaving this sector. In this longshore transport can bring sediments from adjacent sectors, but also can take it away. In order to understand why the shoreline position of a given coastal sector is suffering erosion, we need first to understand the sediment balance within this sector. The sediment balance is the result of the difference between the amount of sediments that are entering this uh, sector and the amount of sediments that are leaving this sector. In this sketch, it's possible to ident identify the main sources and sinks of sediment to a given uh, coastal sector. There are several factors that can drive coastal erosion. In this presentation, I will be explaining shortly some of these key factors. When the amount of sediment that is entering this sector is less than the amount of sediment that is leaving, then we observe a negative net of sediment and coastal erosion takes place. As mentioned before, Rivers are the main source of sediments to coastal areas. However, the presence of dams in their watersheds can trap sediments upstream or even the sand mining on the estuaries can affect the sediment supply to coastal areas. Starting from the reduction of sediment supply. Since the 70s, let's take a look at some examples. In this figure, it's possible to see the location of Rio Douro in the north of Portugal. This river is one of the main sources of sediments to the north coast of Portugal. As a consequence, a dr dramatic reduction on the sediment supply was observed. Several dams were built along the river in order to prevent flooding and also to generate power supply. As a consequence of the reduction of the sediment supply, the beaches at south of uh, Rio Douro started to suffer erosion. As in these photos, you can show the rocky outcrops underlying the sediment layer started to be exposed. As well, it's possible to see the constructions of uh, perpendicular structures such as jetties in order to prevent further erosion. As a consequence, the total amount of sediment supply provided by this river diminished significantly. Before the construction of the dams was about 2 million of cubic meter per year, while at the present it's about 215,000 cubic meter per year. As this example shows in Mekong Delta, this bathymetric survey shows several features where the sand was e extracted by dredging. Sand mining is another activity that can reduce the sediment supply to the coast. This activity consists on the extraction of sand from river banks, reducing the total amount of sand that arrives to the coast. And these uh, shoreline positions uh, observed by satellite are showing rates of erosion of 30 meters per year, so very severe shoreline erosion. As a consequence, the lack of sediment on the coast, the, re the significant reduction of sediments cause shoreline retreat. Coastal protection structures such as jetties or seawalls are standard approaches used to uh, protect shorelines from erosion. However, there are some adverse effects of these uh, features. 
that I will explain now. Let's now take a look at another process, the erosion due to static coastal protection structures. Coastal protection structures such as jetties or seawalls are standard approaches used to uh, protect shorelines from erosion. However, there are some adverse effects of these uh, features that I will explain now. As an example, the construction of jetties that prevent a given sector to lose sediments and to have a shoreline uh, retreat can affect the longshore sediment transport on a wider area. As you can see in this example, the downdrift side of a specific uh, jetty can start to lose sediments and this can have a cascade effect along the coast. In this other example is very visible the impact of the jetties. In this case, jetties were built in order to stabilize the inlet mouth, which is the main entrance of the port, and it's possible to observe that the north uh, jetty blocked the sediment transport and created accretion on the north part of the coast, while the south part of the coast, due to the lack of sediments, started to suffer severe erosion. Sea level rise is also another process that can promote coastal erosion. As we know, global sea level rise at the rates of approximately 3.3 millimeters per year, and this is a process that is expected to continue over the time. With the sea level rise, waves will reach higher levels at the coast, causing erosion of the upper part of the beach and deposition on the lower part. On sandy barriers, a different process will take place. Increasing water levels due to the sea level rise will promote more overwashes to take place, causing the sediment transport to the, ba to the back barrier. With time, this, this process will lead to uh, barrier migration landward. Land subsidence can also drive coastal erosion. Land subsidence can be caused by tectonics, or due to the groundwater extraction and the compactation of rocks above the groundwater. Land subsidence can expose coastlines to waves and tides and storm surges, and thus a sea level rise causing erosion in upper parts of the beach. Waves are a dominant process in transport sediments on the coast, but also in causing coastal hazards during extreme events such as erosion or flooding. Therefore, changes in the wave climate can affect importantly the occurrence of coastal erosion. Episodic extreme events, such as storms, are capable of dra producing dramatic changes in coastal morphology, such as the barrier island breaching or overwashing, overtopping, that can cause important impacts on the human settlements. Therefore, changes in extreme events, such as the intensity of extreme events or the increasing frequency of these events, can also importantly affect coastal erosion. Additional human activities can have an impact on natural environments and promote erosion, such as sand mining of dune environments or also dune trampling or creating new access routes for cars on where previously there was natural dune fields. All these uh, activities can impact uh, importantly the dune system and also create hotspots of vulnerability in terms of flooding and erosion. So I'm finalizing this video and I hope that this uh, uh, give you a quick overview of the main process that drive coastal erosion. It's important to keep in mind that Sediment balance is the key point to understand the coastal erosion and that there are two different types of process, natural process and man-made process, and they are both uh, uh, taking place at the same time. So to understand coastal erosion, but also to prevent against it or mitigate and adapt, it's required to understand this process. Thank you for your attention.